if you're just watching the news, you would probably believe that Detroit is totally blighted and that it has uh, totally deteriorated over the past 50 years under the leadership of primarily African Americans. And at this point in time that the city is totally bankrupt, is over 18 million in debt, and that the city has to be uh, saved from itself. I think also part of the narrative has been that the city is coming back. And a lot of times what we have to educate people on is that we ask the question coming back for whom? Uh, and then we also ask the question in terms of all of the blighted properties, where did the people go? There are people here in the city of Detroit that have a voice that would like to fight against these issues and uh, the media is not really covering it. For Allied Media Projects, media is every way in which we communicate with the world. So if you go to our conference, the Allied Media Conference, you'll find workshops in digital storytelling, uh, web design, graphic design, journalism, but you'll also find uh, workshops in culinary arts and um, fashion as communication and theater and dance. We really root ourselves at the intersection of media and social justice, so uh, the many strategies that communication tools and processes allow us to forge new types of relationships, communicate ideas that ultimately are going to uh, lead us to the, the world that we want to see. We are in Cinema Detroit, which is um, connected to the Office of Allied Media Projects. Um, it's an independent movie theater here in Midtown. <laughs> the stories about Detroit, the narratives of Detroit that come out that other people are seeing that aren't from here are often not the full story. There's more to the picture than what movies like uh, Detroit or other popular movies about Detroit often depict. DNA, the Detroit Narrative Agency, in its first phase offered seed grants to 10 local moving image projects that were based in shifting narratives specifically about Detroit towards more justice and towards a more just, authentic view of that narrative. We've had some really actually very interesting projects, diverse group of projects. I think one of them that sticks out is particularly about land and this revitalization of the city, the government, and corporations are buying up land um, and maybe not even doing anything with it. You know, they've bought land that just kind of sits and they're waiting for the moment to kind of build something there. Um, and then at the other end of that, you have people who have lived in these neighborhoods who are living by these vacant lands who have decided that they are going to grow food on it or they are going to make it into some type of community space. And this particular story talks about the ways that black and brown farmers in the city have been repurposing vacant lots and have been really pushed out from being able to officially like buy that land and own the land. The city wants less vacancies. The city wants to be like, to look like this kind of new, you know, bright like place. Um, but at the same time, they're not allowing Detroit residents, Detroit families, to purchase land in a way that's accessible or that's affordable. There's a lot of new development happening in the city, which is very new. It's happening rapidly. Um, and it's a little disconcerting, I think, to those that have been here um, for a very long time that have struggled without any funding, any support, and with a corrupt government. Um, it feels as though the, the development is not happening for those people. The development is actually happening for a new tax base to come in and sort of pull us out of, you know, our emergency management and our bankruptcy. The thing that's pretty intense about Detroit's connectivity is um, that 40% of folks don't have broadband. Um, and then like 33% of those live below the federal poverty level, which means that even affording broadband is, is kind of impossible. The way in which we've addressed um, digital access and broadband adoption here in Detroit is through community technology. To do this work of community technology requires both community organizing and uh, IT expertise. And so Anderson Walworth here and myself 
have been working on um, wireless networks, learning everything we can about them, teaching several communities, both here in Detroit, in New York, and around the world on how to do both the IT and the community organizing aspects of it. Anderson can sort of show you around this uh, to tell you what the routers are, what they do, and how we make um, a community wireless network. Also what the intranet is, which is where the apps live, and that's um, uh, those are resources that you can access without the internet connection. Never loved heights. I've kind of had to force myself up these rooftops for the last five years. So we're on the rooftop of Allied Media Projects. There are um, four or five routers up here. This is one of our, our nodes or one of our, our mesh routers. And this one in particular, it, it, it actually is off kilter. It's supposed to be pointed this way towards the hardware store, and it's not. So it's good that we came up here. I mean, the obvious thing it can do, if you hook it up to an internet connection, it will share it to the rest of the routers in the network. But another thing it can do is it can host local applications or local servers. So um, you could host any, anything from um, like a Minecraft server or um, like we have an app that hosts local stories and poetry from the, from the neighborhood that everyone can access on the, the network. More than half the work is the organizing part. It's just getting to know your neighbors, getting to know the local organizations, and finding other people to help support the network. For me, one of the best ways of communicating and learning about what's going on is through talking to other people. The Allied Media Conference is a nexus of that kind of sharing for us. Our role is to hold that space and to make it the most generative space possible for these types of critical connections and new ideas. I do think it's possible for media to model and, and really embody that type of exchange of knowledge across places. People should constantly be thinking about how do we create our own platforms, how do we get more of our stories out there, how do we show more and more people. I think it's a, about the infrastructure. Like what is the current ecosystem that's available for all of this to thrive in? And is there one? And if there's not one, okay, well then how do we make that happen? Or how do we make that possible? How do we plug in to maybe some other infrastructure ecosystem that's available? What does that actually mean and feel like and actually look like to do something that's collaborative and creative and successful? And what is success? How do we measure it? <laughs> Detroit to me is inspiring because it's a movement city. Detroit was central to the rise of the labor movement. It was central to the expansion of the civil rights movement to the north. Certainly it was at the center of the black power movement. Uh, and today it's at the center of a different type of revolutionary movement. One that defines revolution not through militancy and not through simply taking control of the political structures, but of recreating and rebuilding community through human values that stress the importance of relationships, taking care of each other, taking care of the earth, um, and not waiting for someone else to come in and do that. I think out of that mindset of self-determination and cooperative work, uh, we have created a model for the world that is not only about being able to uplift what the problems are, but to also be able to uplift that we have solutions. In the like super long term, the end goal would definitely be to have these narratives be the ones that we're watching, the ones that people are seeing uh, across the country and across the world, and the ones that they're using to refer to the city when they're talking about what happens here.